What's up, peoples? It's Gendo here, and guess what day it is? It's a special day. It's Chicago Fire Opening Day. Now, as it stands right now, the weatherman is saying that the temperature currently is about 25 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about minus 4 in Celsius. The high is only supposed to be 30, with a wind chill factoring up to about 20 degrees Fahrenheit, which means, well, let's just say the temperature is going to be cold as balls. So that means we got to layer up. I'm only in a shirt and jeans right now, but first and foremost, we need to get some extra layers. Sweater, jacket, Chicago Fire scarf, Chicago Fire hat, and gloves. Well, one of them at least. Now we got all that situated, let's go take a trip over to Toyota Park. The distance between where I live now compared to where I was growing up, it's not all that different. It's just a little longer from where I am now. It's more of a straight shot now since I just need to go straight down Harlem and it's right there on the intersection of Harlem and 71st. But going down this route, there are a ton more obstacles compared to if I was coming from where I grew up. Now, is it just me or is 21 Pilots seem to be played more and more every day? First home game of the season, Chicago Fire, Rail Salt Lake, and to be quite honest with you, Rail Salt Lake didn't do all that well versus Toronto. Yes, it was an nil-nil draw in their very first match, but with the firepower that the Chicago Fire have, no pun intended, with Emmanuel Nikolic, Michael Delu, David Akam, I feel like we should easily come away with three points here. Yes, it's cold. Yes, got a little bit of wind rolling, but I feel like score predictions for today, Chicago Fire two, Real Salt Lake one. Chicago Fire, let's go. And also at the same time behind me, a lot of tailgating going on. And to be quite honest with you, that's the one major thing about coming to any sport in America is that you're guaranteed to get some sort of tailgating, whether it's in the stadium itself, or whether it's in the parking lot, you're gonna have a lot of people having a good time. Now, whether it's party buses, whether it's people just grilling on their own, I'm seeing like every other car, every three cars, there's somebody out back playing bags, playing football, grilling something, in fact, sitting right in front of me, we got some party buses where they're growing as well. Let's take a look at that. Sector Latino, one of the main Chicago Fire supporter groups. At least standing in the sun, it's not too bad. The wind has died down too, but it's still 30 degrees. Oh well, hope we'll get warmer while sitting. Otherwise, if the fire lose and it's crappy cold, then it's just double bad. Come on, boys! Crap, the Rhino put the flag up and put it down. Nemanja Nikolic gets it through past the goalkeeper. It's 1-0, Chicago Fire, right before the 11-minute mark. Let's go, boys! Come on, fire! 
just like that, two minutes later, five minutes later, I should say, Arturo Alvarez deflected goal off a defender past the goalkeeper. It's fire two for Al Salt Lake Nil. Let's go, boys. Keep it going, boys. Fire, 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 fire. fire. That is our coach, Velko Panovic. Pretty sure he's happy we're up 2 0 right now. Our post. So it's halftime, Chicago Fire up 2 0. And this is some of the best football I've seen out of the team in quite some time. And I'm glad that it's finally coming to a head. Juninho and Dax McCarty are controlling the midfield. And that's really helpful going forward. You need to stop anything that Real Salt Lake's doing down the middle. And Dax and Juninho are doing just that. Defense, still a little spotty at times, especially down the right side. Harrington needs to step up his game. Otherwise, he needs to you know, be sold out or something. You need to get a new right mid or right back. Other than that, everything's going fine. Second 45, hopefully we come away solid and get the three points here. Way out. So there's about 17 minutes left to go in the match and the Chicago Fire have pretty much lost all sort of killer instinct. Any sport of competitive edge in this match. 2-0, not a safe scoreline. I don't know what Velko said to them at halftime, but 2-0 is not a safe scoreline. They really need to get a third goal or at least close down defensively. It's Real Salt Lake's really taking it to them right now. over the bar. Full time. First win of the season. Check back to you when I get back. All right, guys, back home now. Jesus Christ, hat hair. Anyway, hey, let's get a rundown of how the Chicago Fire actually did over the 90 minutes. And to be quite honest with you, it was a tale of two halves. Chicago Fire played extraordinarily well in the first 45, obviously getting the two goals, but they just had a very... A very strong bite to their attack. They were linking up extremely well between the midfield and the attackers. Dax McCarty and Juninho absolutely played out of their minds in that first half to create that uh, sort of dynamic in the midfield that we all wanted to see. With Dax being more of a ball playing mid, Juninho more uh, pushing forward as an attacking mid. So uh, they had um, some great link up play there out on the wings, getting it to Arturo Alvarez and David Akam crossing it in to Delu and Nemanja Nikolic. So that's all perfectly fine. Defense still a little shaky, but got the job done at least for the first 45. The second 45, however, oh boy, I don't know what Velko Panovic said to them at halftime, but they were playing on their back feet. They were playing on their heels for the first 25, 30 minutes of that second half and Real Salt Lake just charged forward at every possible opportunity. They were just lumping balls into the box. Fortunately, uh, Jorge Bava able to make a few saves there to prevent Salt Lake from getting anything, but it just looked like the killer instinct, the cutting edge of the attack was just gone for those first 25, 30 minutes up until that free kick. And up until that free kick, Chicago Fire only put the ball once or twice into the Salt Lake half. It just was all Salt Lake throughout the second half. But fortunately, the guys kicked it into high gear. Once the subs came on, they gave some fresh legs to the Fire and uh, ultimately put the game on ice, sealed the victory for the Fire. So it's first win of the season for the Fire. Very happy with how the team is playing and they're showing signs of promise this season. Like I said, I predicted them to be sixth place in the conference, which means they will sneak into the playoffs. That's what I want to see from this year. They have the team to do it. Hopefully, they can actually go and prove me right. But anyway, guys, thanks very much for taking a look at the Chicago Fire vlog. First one of the year. Hope to see you guys again in two weeks' time. I honestly had to take a look to see who we are facing. Montreal Impact is going to be our next opponent in two weeks' time. So I hope to see you guys then. Take care. Peace out. Bye-bye.